Hey folks, how's everybody doing? I want to wish everybody a happy Father's Day out there. Happy Father's Day to my dad. Hope you're having a great day. Um, couldn't ask for a more wonderful father. So, uh, wish I was there in the States hanging out with you. But I'm here in the Philippines chilling. Spending Father's Day with uh, two of my babies here. We spent Mother's Day out here, and this wasn't planned. We were sitting around the house. I say sitting around. I was working on a video. Damn, I forgot to post the video. Anyhow. You just go outside then. I was working on posting a video, which I failed to do. And for some reason, I went outside to take a break, ran into my buddy Warner. Hey, buddy, what you doing? He said, oh, I got to go to the airport, fly. You want to go? I was like, you know what? Hell yeah, we will go if you got time to wait on us. I said, dude, give us three minutes. And it took more like six or seven, ten, somewhere in there. But anyhow, Mommy, he waited on us. We saddled Daddy, up. And now we're out here at the airport all day. Just a great day. Beautiful, quiet day out here in the country. Beautiful views of Mount Riot on your drive over here to this place. And if you take an ultralight flight, you can see beautiful views as well. I think I think I ordered some rice. If not, just enjoy the French fries. <laughs> Again, big shout out to all the fathers out there. Fathers are what makes the world go round. Not to talk politics, but most of the problems in my home country of the United States are due to the absence of fathers because the past few decades you know US law basically removes us fathers from the life of the child the minute you get pissed off at their mother or their mother gets pissed off at you vice versa you go from being a dad to some dude who gets to visit every other weekend two weeks in the summer Enough of the politics. Thank you Friday so nice much. Hmm? Bye, mommy. Good. Bye. Mommy, oh, fly. Mommy, yeah, fly. Flies, yeah. Flies like a good food. <coughs> Happy Father's Day, everybody. <coughs> Go for it, G. Do some jumping. <coughs> <laughs> Let's sit here, watch my kids play. You got a bunch of other kids running around. You sit here and think, you know, what does it mean to be a father? Man, that's a question right there. That's going to come up with a different answer from anybody that you ask. What does it mean? And I was sitting there thinking to that Yellowstone episode where, uh, you know, Jamie finds out he's adopted. He confronts uh, John Dutton. And they're, they're in the house by the fireplace, if I remember correctly. You know, Kevin Costner, you know, John Dutton says... Talking about cows, you know. And he was talking about how they call the bull, you know, one bull impregnates however many cows, 20, 30, 40 cows, what, what have you. But they just call him the bull. But they call the cows that bear the calves, they call them mamas. And he's basically explained it to him. And I may screw this all up, but. You know, he's talking about because his dad was a was a shithead who killed his mom, right? Basically, like, your, your dad, he's just a bull. 
you know, John Dutton raised them, cared for them, what have you. So in that sense, you know, he gets to be called the father. Would you agree? Now in the West, damn, here we go talking politics again. You know, in the West, once your girlfriend or wife gets pissed at you, goes and sees a lawyer, you can't be a father anymore. Not a full-time father. You have to be that guy that sees your kids, limited basis, and you have to be extra nice because you're afraid they won't want to come back if you discipline them. And I could talk about this all day. But what does it mean to be a father? I'm going to share with you something that a buddy of mine said. Now, he, he's retired Navy, so obviously he had a career in the Navy. Got kids of different ages and obviously spent extended periods of time away from his children. And I'm going to share with you what he said about what kids really want. Is they want to look down the hallway and see you standing there. And it's almost verbatim what he said. Maybe I messed up a couple of words, but... They want you to be there. They want you to be present. Is the, the point that he was making. Now look, we all have to go out into the world and fight off the wolves, bring home the bacon, uh, hunt down some food, gather some food, make our money, make our living, and make sure everybody in the household and the kingdom is fed. So don't think that I'm saying you're not a good father because you have to deploy or because you have to go work on an oil rig. We've all had to sacrifice spend time away from our families, away from our kids. We've all had to do that. Maybe not all of us, but a lot of us have had to do that. And the person who said that obviously had to do that during a, a long career in the Navy. And now, like myself, he has kids over here. And we're around, the, uh, we're around our kids every day. There's no deployments, there's no leaving. If it is, it's for short periods of time just to handle business, what have you. And so we're not casting stones. This is coming from people who have been on both sides of the fence. And when I lived in America and my son was growing up, when he was with me, I obviously had to work. And I wasn't a 40 hour a week type dude. I was more like a 70 plus hour a week type dude with side hustles going on trying to make it. Trying to improve everybody's life, their living conditions, things that we do as parents. But at some point, I think you have to circle around and get back to what my buddy said. He said, what kids really want is just look down that damn hallway and see you standing there. They look up and they see old dad's in the living room. He's in his easy chair. Old dad's out in the garage. That's comfort, right? That's comfort knowing that you're there. It's like the first level of force when you learn about levels of force in, you know, law enforcement or the military is presence officer presence just being there just showing up that's a level of force and with children being there is a level of force and a level of comfort and so you know coming from a couple of guys that are this guy wrote a book in Thailand I'll think of it in a minute but he called us second hand no not second hand <laughs> second time dads I think that was his nickname. There's a bunch of names, whatever. But you know, a lot of us expats, we have kids in the States. We went on that ride. We come over here or Central America, you know, usually outside the West and start a family, have kids. You know, I'm coming up on 50 years old, I'm a pirate looking at 50 and I got small kids and they're just a blessing. Just an absolute blessing. But anyhow, he called us second time dads. So we'd get to see things from two, you know, that perspective in America when we were young, working, chasing the dollar, trying to pay bills, trying to, uh, you know, buy your kids the latest and greatest, whatever the hell game system comes out, 
the latest cell phone, buy them clothes, send them to this, to gymnastics, karate, whatever the hell they're into. And, and it's a rat race. When in the end, I think what matters most is just being there, being present. Them children looking down the hallway, either seeing you, watching TV, or eating, or clanking around in the garage, just knowing that you're home. So the point of this is, there's got to be a balance. Obviously, you have to prioritize making a living. Obviously, um, a lot of us had to and have to travel. We have to deploy. We have to do those things. But keep it in the back of your mind. That there, there has to be a balance. Or else, by the time your kid is grown and leaves the house, you've been... Um, you've lost a lot of time. You can't get time back. That's the one thing we can't buy is time. You're not going to get those that time back when they're one, two, three, four. You're not getting that time back. You can put your sleeves through there. <laughs> Here, put them through there. <laughs> now are you warm? Okay. Maria just got out of the shower. Got a wet head. Go tell Mama Tima to dry your hair and comb your hair, sweetie. Or go bring me the comb and Papa a comb it. I don't have a comb here. Yes. Okay, go find the comb. So, there's a balance. You have to find that own balance in your life uh, with prioritizing what has to be prioritized. But, you know, chasing that big promotion for, you know, your own ego, your own self-appointed uh, goals may be fine in some cases in other cases it's not worth the time that that position is going to rob you of of being around your kids and uh you're the only one that's going to figure that out all i can do is just bring up the topic you know set the form i don't write a script so everything i do is just off the cuff there's not a lot of planning what i do on my videos i just open the camera I try to stare directly into the lens so I'm talking to you. Most of the time I, it's human nature to look over at this uh, monitor on the side here. But the point is, I don't write a script. Occasionally I take some notes. On this one I didn't. I'm just coming off the cuff. That's why I'm all over the map. So in the comments we're going to have people that say, hey, you know, you got to make sure you, you make enough money for their future and people on the other side of the spectrum are going to say, you need to spend more time with your kids and not worry about buying them an iPhone. And that's the debate. And everybody's a different place, but we all have to, to agree that you can't get that time back. You can't buy more time when your kid is three years old, four years old. I mean, think about it. When they're three, you have one year to spend with them when they're a three-year-old. Yes, that's Captain Obvious, but most people don't think about it. Holy shit, I just had my kid's birthday, she's four. I've only got one year now before she's five. I'm a pirate looking at 50. How many good years do you think I still have? Now, when I was a young guy, I didn't think I'd make it past, past 30. I just didn't, didn't think I would, you know? Things I wanted to do in life, and I didn't think I'd make it past 30. And my god my 40s i've been partying like a rock star i've been partying like a rock star since i was probably 12 years old but you know so who knows how long this old bag of bones is going to hold up now I, I feel great i feel great i look great i'm a pirate I'm coming up on 50. uh i could still put on them shoes right now and go for a five click run probably make it 10 if i really push myself before this lockdown i was doing 10 like it was nothing uh, right now I plan to live I, I plan on living to be a hundred I've changed the way I'm I'm thinking the way I think 100 is my number and I think I can push it past that unless I get run over by a jeepney or something traumatic that's outside my scope uh, medical problems nope I'm gonna beat them I'm not gonna go to the hospital <laughs> because I'm just gonna beat them. 
They're not going to, I'm not going to succumb to any medical problems. That's my mindset. Now, can I 100% predict that? No, but that's my, my mindset. Why? Because I don't want to spend more time with my kids. I don't want to fucking die at 49 or 50. I want to die at 100 when my kids are, you know, in their mid-60s. That's the new goal. And I want to spend as much time with them as I can. That's my mindset now. So, back to time management. At some point, and I'll, and I'll tell the story too, I've told it before. My buddy did a couple of tours in Iraq contracting. And basically, you know, you're going for the for a year, but you get a couple breaks, you know, a couple two week breaks in between. Uh, most contracts, not all, but you know, some of them you get those two week breaks. But if you go for two or three years, I mean, that's a long period of time. Um, I did a couple of years, and in that time frame, my wife didn't have any idea who I was. Ended up getting a divorce. That's quite common. And in his case, he had done a couple of years, and he was home on leave, sitting in his easy chair. His two little small children were playing with their toys in front of him in the living room and it was getting late so he said hey y'all pick up your toys and uh, get ready for bed you know and they looked up at his wife and said mom do we have to do what this guy says and he said that was it that, that was it he knew he'd been gone too long uh, kids didn't even know him didn't know what his role was didn't know if they had to mind the guy or not he said that was it I had to give it up because my kids don't even know who I am anymore. Now, being deployed, being on an oil rig, um, you know, you're sitting in the desert, you're doing what you gotta do, and positioning yourself um, to, a, to a better level of financial freedom, financial stability. Okay, got it. I'm not telling you what to do, I'm just throwing things out there to invoke thought. That's all I'm doing. But for me, if somebody said, hey man, I'll give you a million dollars a year to go sit in the desert uh, and deploy, I'm not interested. That's just me. I'm not interested. You can give me five million. I'm not willing to go sit over there uh, for a year and sell a year of time away from my children for the, for really no amount of money. Why? Because I'm a pirate looking at 50. My dream is 100, but I can't guarantee it. So how valuable is a year of your time if you're dead? Is it worth $5 million? <laughs> you know what I mean? No, oh, it's worth a hell of a lot more than that. You can't buy it back. All y'all folks think about retirement and you want to go a couple more years so you're getting 200 more dollars because inflation and blah, blah, blah. You know how much your check is if you're dead? It's fucking zero. All right? Zero, motherfucker. You don't get no money when if you're dead. So all y'all thinking about waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting to draw so I can get more money. You ain't gonna make it six months. Then you're dead. Then, you, then they got all that money. They're praying that you don't take that shit early. My advice to you, if you're gonna retire or whatever, you take pensions, retirements, whatever you can get as early as you can get it because there ain't no guarantee you're gonna live long enough to capitalize on that extra money. But you're not gonna take my advice because it's scary to retire scary to change jobs you're just gonna keep doing what most Americans do stay in the meat grinder oh if I wait till I'm you know 84 years old to draw my Social Security I'll get 1200 more dollars a month that'd be great if you're gonna live forever <laughs> I'm exaggerating but you got where I'm coming from how did I get to talk about Social Security? Okay, so many topics here, but happy Father's Day. 
my priority is to spend as much time and as much quality time with my children as I can. Obviously, making sure they have everything that they want. But if, if, you know, if it's the difference of them getting a brand new iPhone every six months versus me spending time with them, they'll be rocking and talking text with them thumbs going like that. And we'll be at the beach or the pool or whatever, and they can text like that because I don't give a shit um, about the alternative, if that makes sense. All right, that's enough, folks. Like I don't have a script and no notes. Now I'm just throwing shit out there. Spend time with your kids. Find your own balance or not. It's your life. But I know what my balance is, and I know what my priorities are. If I have to go deploy, if I have to go fight off the fucking wolves, if I have to go out and slay the dragons and bring home some meat for the barbecue, I will. But I'm not going out there and doing all that so I can buy a new fucking bass boat or a new car or build houses in the village. Nope. It's all about time. If you're not a subscriber on my channel, bottom right hand corner of your screen, hit that overstay road sign. Get on board my train. And then there's gonna be a bell, something about some notifications. You ring that bell like Rocky. Yo Adrian! It's me, Rocky. Happy Father's Day. Ring the bell. One quick statistic, which is pretty cool, but um, I need some of y'all to subscribe. Now, having subscribers on your channel is not the holy grail because you can have a million subscribers and if you're getting 10,000 views a video, uh, you see what I mean? But here's the metric. Right around 50% of y'all listening to my voice are not subscribers. And it's almost like the metrics are 50-50. It's not like 80-20, 70-30. You look at the watch time, the views, the demographics. 50% of y'all are not subscribers, but you watch my videos. So, all I can do is ask you to please subscribe. You know, a lot of these metrics that are looked upon subscriber count is one of them uh, so if you don't mind hit that subscribe button I'm trying to get to a million subscribers by tonight I'm optimistic <laughs> anyhow yeah so the other 50% not subscribe hit that button ring that bell I certainly appreciate you I'm out of here and peace out